Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the outpost. Today we're going to be discussing a few uh, topics that um, are not rightfully po uh, popular. But in order for us to bring clarity and growth, we have to discuss uncomfortable topics sometimes. So good morning, Dr. James Kitcart. How are you this morning? Fantastic. How's the Prophet of Zion Ministries, Zion Deliverance Ministries, Prophet Shavita? How are you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for joining me on this morning. And we're going to hop right in. Welcome to the post. And we're going to hop right in. Today, we're going to talk about um, the Black church, the culture. It's Black History Month. And we want to shine some light on some past things, some present things, and things that we're doing in the future. So for right now, we, we have some statistics. And we're going to talk about those statistics. And then after we talk about those statistics, I want your um, feedback on where we are now and where we're going as a body. Um, is Black culture, is that a thing of the past? Okay. So, you know, some of the statistics say 85, there's 85,000 Black churches in the United States. 85,000 Black churches in the United States. There's also been, and this was done by Vice TV, this was done by um, Amazon Prime um, and different organizations, these statistics. And they say Black people are the most religious people in the world. So the question is, if there's all these Black churches in the neighborhoods and we're the most religious, why are we the most oppressed? Okay. And um, I'll just, can I, can, I say, can I say a prayer real quick? You sure can. Okay. Father, thank you. In Christ the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach's name we pray. Amen. Okay. I just want to make sure because... Um, this is a very sensitive topic, and um, I smile. I'm smiling a lot because um, I'm not oppressed any longer, and I'm smiling also because I believe that the broadcast is going to liberate many people that have been offended by systematic oppression, systematic um, um, digression of progress for people i also want to make that put this disclaimer out that we know that there's only one body with many members but it's february 2022 and this is the date this is the month that's been set aside by the system um, to celebrate uh, black history so we want you to understand as viewers we're not confused that there's no such thing as a black church and a white church and a green church, but you do have a black culture that's in the church, just as you have an Asian culture that's in the church or a Caucasian culture in the church. So that's why we're discussing this. We want to make sure that we're, we're not novice at this. This is a very seasoned um, leader here with um, Prophet Shavita is very seasoned. So I just want you to get that uh, up front. But what we're dealing with right now is um, so much information is now coming to the forefront. And what I mean by information, the information that I know, uh, at least the generations before me, now I'll, I'll be 60, Lord willing, this year I'll be 60. And so I know my generation of people, we were educated in history books written by our oppressors. Just as we know that the slaves were given a Bible with limited ability to even comprehend, let alone a King James translation, okay? Were not allowed to study, to read, you better come over here already able to read if you could, and if you could piece together what was saying. And so we had a book, we had an image of a God or a deity that was ingrained 
into our psyche so that this is our God. This, the blonde hair, blue eyed is our God and we better bow down to anything that's lighter than us. Are you, you gotta follow me. I'm following you. And so what happened was the, the slaves with a slave mentality and a hopeless mentality if you can imagine being pulled from your country, put on a ship like a like a wild animal in stocks and chains, things that they had never experienced before, get on a large boat, have slop thrown at you for food, and people were sick, vomiting, defe defecating, urinating, all these things in this stench laden uh infested cargo hold of a ship and then all of a sudden they get to this new land months later not a couple of days or weeks months later they get to this new land and they're brought out the ones that survived the ones that died they all they did was they went down in there and grabbed the dead ones and uh, or had the slaves grab the dead ones and just throw them overboard that was just fish food dark shark bait but you know fish food and that was it so, you know, people saw their husbands and wives and children just thrown overboard like rubbish, just like garbage. Mm -hmm. So you're already messing with my psychosis. Okay. Yeah. I'm psychologically in shock. I've been traumatized. And now I'm here being sold on an auction block. And I see my wife get sold to the Anderson family and then the Whitlock family purchased me and I go that way and then my children are going to the Swanson family that direction and I know we'll never see each other again so mm -hmm. now I've had anything that I could hold on to as a hope it's been stripped from me and then I had the threat of either work or get whipped and then I was put into a bunkhouse and giving basic provisions, but systematically given scraps, especially pork and things that I didn't come from uh, Africa eating this kind of stuff. And now I'm eating it. So now I'm being um, introduced to foods that are going to cause my life to be short. And all I am is a piece of property. N not even knowing ramifications of eating poorly and i've never been in weather where it's 20 degrees outside and snowing what's this white stuff and so <laughs> all these things are being introduced can you imagine how psychologically disruptive this could be to a person a slave oh okay oh at the same time then they were handed this book called the Bible to read by their oppressor. Their oppressor gave them a good book to read, which introduced them into uh, things that were uh, putting them into a form of bondage. Because here I am, you're giving me a book and it's telling me about how um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever should call on his name shall be saved. And, all men were created in the image of God and all men were created equal, but I'm a slave and my master's whipping me. So I, I, I don't understand this, but you know, I got to do what the master said because I, I got to eat and I got to protect my the little bit of family or whoever I have left. I got to behave because if I don't, I'll get whipped or they've threatened to kill them or, mm. you know, or they're going to take my wife into the master's house and she'll come back with torn garments on well that same mentality through each generation though there was an emancipation proclamation around the 1862 time period 1863 and 1864 with abraham lincoln supposedly liberating the slaves but the truth of the matter was the the slaves were liberated to fight with the Union Army. That's what the liberation was. It wasn't liberty to just go out into the land and you get 40 acres and a mule and you're free and just go ahead and do your thing. And 
you know, come on over to our house sometime and have some, you know, we'll have some fried chicken and whatever. No, they were, they were liberated. So what happened is that generation just fought for the country, fought for the union, and then in its own way, shape, and form, still had isolation, segregation, no integration. And then as time went by and the generations went by, we had white only water fountain, colored only, black entrance, white entrance, black seating area on the train, white seating area on the train. So I was allowed on the train, but I wasn't allowed to go freely throughout the train and sit wherever I wanted to. I, all of us had to sit in one section. So here we are again, still have the Bible, but we're still yet oppressed. And now time goes by and Martin Luther King begins the movement uh, uh, and has a dream and we're expecting the little white boy and a little white and little black boy or a little colored boy and little colored uh, white boy to hold hands and go to school together and be happy and we've 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 progressed we've progressed in certain certain ways but at the end of the day it's still a system especially um, with the bill of rights it has never been changed Ronald Reagan attempted to change it, but they still did not say people of color. They didn't say it in the way that would identify us as Black people in the United States of America. We were still in a very subliminal way listed as just property. And mm. so when you deal with people in that kind of uh, mindset, I've heard leaders say, they preach sermons, I'm talking about in the 2000s, and they said, well, we've had our sermon for today, and now we'll all just go out on the grass out back and spread our blankets and eat our chicken and watermelon and, and just wait for the sweet by and by. And I, I looked and I said, now he's older than me, so I said, I'm not, I'm going to go to Olive Garden or I'm going to go to Outback. I'm not going out on no blanket and eat some chicken and watermelon. <laughs> but it was the mindset that became accepted and it became the norm for that generation right before me. My situation was a generation of people that were brought into um, uh, succeed, success, um, experience success in military careers, experience success in a government job, making six figures, and, uh, bought, uh, bought three houses. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the system is still limited for the people of color because the way the system and the way the government runs it doesn't see us as equal. It sees us as additional people that are in the country. Migrants that come from um, uh, Ireland and Europe and all this, they get better benefits coming into the country as immigrants than we do who were forcefully brought over here. You have the American Indians, though they're on a reservation, they've come up with a bill so that they are paid a certain amount of money in compensation for what took place with their forefathers. But when it comes to the Black Americans, nothing. Once again, if you don't like it here, go back to Africa. You, that's the mentality. So what's taking place to, to really summarize the answer to this question is that people now, there's a generation of people that have put their foot down and said, no more. We're not, we're not going to be bound by the system. We're going to go back and we're going to research our roots and we're going to find out who we really are. And even my generation, we're finding out all the historical lies that were fed to us. And it can frustrate you, especially here's another thing. 
that you would see a congregation full of people and they could be majority people of color, but their, their leader, their senior pastor was a Caucasian. Or you can have, let's say an all, a, a mixed congregation and you would have a leader of color that was attempting to lead the, the entire congregation into moving into um, succeeding in life economically, um, establishing businesses. And so people didn't like that because they said, well, he needs to just stick to preaching like, like um, Pastor John used to just pre preach to us and make us feel happy. And then we would go out and sit on the ox cart and eat Fritos and Pepsi, you know? And so it was a gen generation of people that didn't want to make a change because they felt like I got a house, I have a car, and I, I, you know, I got a kitchen and some food, so I, I don't have anything to complain about. So they became satisfied. Complacent. And now this, this mm -hmm. generation is saying we're not satisfied. We've been, we've been in bondage all these years, and we've had our rights played with as if we're wild animals. And the people have become frustrated, even in the church setting, because it was... God's about to make you a millionaire. Oh, go outside and look in the mailbox. There's going to be a check for $10,000 in there. So they mm -hmm. went to this thing called the prosperity thing. And that was preached, but nobody taught people how to manage money. Nobody Stewardship. To, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So if I'm bound, I don't care how much money the Lord, and if truth be told, the Lord's not going to give me what I can't manage. He's That's not fast. going to give it to me because I don't know how to manage it. I would make a fool out of myself. And so it's not that the Lord doesn't desire to bless us. It's that we as a people haven't been properly taught. And now the teaching's going forth. And that's why people have pulled away from the so-called church setting. And they're like, wait a minute, this, wait a minute, no. We had the pandemic, and the pastor told us if we didn't go to church, that we were going to be cursed. But when nobody going to church, and truth be told, I got three promotions during since 2019. <laughs> I got four pay raises, and sold and bought a new house. So how am I cursed if I don't go to the building? But all this nice stuff, great stuff, has been happening. And then the pastor said, we can't make any decisions unless it goes through him. But I wasn't able to get in contact with the pastor, you know, and go to a meeting because of the pandemic and before he knew how to do Zoom and whatever. So I made some decisions. My family's blessed. So it was like we're coming out and realizing we were, we were, we were given uh, a soup sandwich and some Kool-Aid. And the people are saying, I'm not eating any more soggy sandwiches and I'm not drinking any more Kool-Aid. I'm going to search the scriptures for myself and I'm going to search my African-American or my Black history and find out who I really am. And now I'm going to study and get into economics and find out how I can take my family to this next level that people have been mythologically talking about um with the with the corrupt system now i understand the system i'm going to succeed because i know who i am i'm sorry All for right. being so long-winded but I'm, that was just the no that's 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 good that's very good so after overcoming trauma rejection oppression enough is enough yes and and even the systems in you know we talked about the seven mountains in the systems that's in place and all of those it's like now it's time that i study for myself and so training is what because we have a whole lot of information out here on social media on um, magazines tv we have information being thrown at us daily and we're dealing now with a, a generation that is truly hungry and they want training. They want teaching. Don't preach at me. Teach me. Reach That's me. what. 
don't 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 preach and don't teach reach me in other words you could throw a whole bunch of information out but it's just going over my head i want you to say something i want you to i want you to i want you to mentor me i want you to make some type of contact with me come to me where i am and and have that dialogue with me so that you're not just spewing a whole bunch of information now. I'm trying to copy notes. And then when I leave the place, I end up throwing the notes away because none of it makes sense. And we've done that. We need to incrementally from if it's, if it's um, fundamental teaching and it is an embarrassing as it may seem. Um, I, 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 I've heard this said, the dumbest question asked is the question not asked. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. And it's it, we're at the point right now where I don't think there's any teaching that is set up when it's the truth to belittle anyone. It's to educate, it's to inform, and you have to start sometimes at the lowest level of teaching and then incrementally build them up. You can't just tell people, Take your 401k and invest in a uh, three a 501c3 and do this and that and whatever, whatever, and get a get yourself a CD and then invest in E-Trade. And they're looking at you like, first of all, I don't know, I don't know what is any anything of that? about what you just said. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to teach. You might have to have um, workshops at the church where you're teaching check writing and budgeting. See, you preach on your Sundays and you preach the gospel but you have these fellowship halls and you can have people that are already in the church. This is where the five-fold ministry comes in because you have people that are doctors and lawyers and dentists and uh, financers and um, attorneys and all these different skills in this congregation. But we have put one person as the only source of information in the building. And you have all this knowledge sitting out in the congregation. I'm not going to say pews because I don't care about pews anymore. I'm going to say it's sitting in the chairs and nobody wants to pull on their skills. I and that handicaps the body. It handicaps the body because you have skilled people. You, you could have workshops for, uh, for nutrition. You can have workshops for resume writing. You can yes. have workshops for financial planning and budgeting. You can have workshops for, for getting your, getting your uh, finances in position for the purchase of home. You can have workshops for credit repair right there in the building. Yes. But the system made us preach and we wanted to make people shout and run and dance and spin around on their heads and be happy and then leave with the poverty slave mentality because we were just getting our emotions, emotions. Mm -hmm. but we weren't getting any knowledge on how to become economically successful in this thing called life yes so would you would it be safe to say when knowledge and understanding meets up together for transformation is that's wisdom the, the, that's that's information experience wisdom is actually ingesting it filtering it filtering through it asking the hard questions while you're ingesting it and then be able to retain it that's that's where the wisdom is the wisdom it, there's information out there. YouTube has tons of information. Um, social media has tons of information. But if I'm ignorant, I will sit and wonder how do you do trigonometry? How do you do calculus? But wisdom says, go to YouTube and listen to the course on how to do trigonometry. Um, it's something I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm transparent. You know how I am. Uh -huh. I took basic math from the first grade all the way to the 12th grade. 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then one plus one is two and all that stuff. I did all that, okay? All the way through school because I feared algebra because I heard my older brother and older sister, uh, two older brothers and older sister talking about how hard algebra was, was. And so I feared algebra. And then I would look and I would say, it said A times B equals seven with a little dot on it. What is that? You know, I don't want nothing to do with that. And, and so I feared and it took me all the way into my mid fifties to sit down and look at a YouTube channel and it taught me algebra. And I was like, this is fun. Yeah. Once you learn the formula is fun. Well, yeah. it's the same thing. We have a fear of the unknown. Yes. And most of the time when we breach that barrier of fear and step into the unknown, we have already gained wisdom because we have left the place we were and we have walked into a, a place of unknown. And I believe that anytime you enter into something that's unknown, you are subject to learn and learning is gaining knowledge. And it's a wise person that chooses to gain knowledge. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So let me ask you a question. We know learning and transitioning and all of those things, that's a part of being in this walk. Why is change so hard? Well, change becomes hard. It becomes hard because um, we see ourselves in various dimensions uh, or various levels. We've been taught various levels from our basic education system. I went to elementary school, which is from the first grade to the sixth grade. And then we had what was called middle school. And that was from the seventh grade to the ninth grade. And then we were, oh, well, we're going to high school. So now it's the 10th grade through the 12th grade. And then it's college for those who went to college. And you have the freshman all the way to the senior. So it's always been some type of increment. It's an increment. It's incrementally. Incremental education, incremental system, incremental in the military for promotions. You're going to be promoted to private first class, and then you're going to have to be a private first class for such and such amount of time before you can get the next promotion. And then when you get the next promotion, you got to do this, this, and that before you... And so we've been programmed that way. And so when it comes to freely gaining information, we have been so systematically chained, uh, trained to learn in increments that we fear stepping out and just grabbing hold of some information and begin to learn it. We think we have to go through certain processes and have to wait a certain period of time. And like I said, you have this generation of people. I've seen some of these kids, they, they, they're like in the ninth, they're in the eighth grade and they're taking college, pre-college courses. Yeah. Because they said, no, I, that's, that's the system, but uh, I can sit down and learn a whole bunch of stuff and be ahead of my class. And you have people graduate from high school, 15, 16 years old, graduating, yeah. going to college at 16. I thought I was doing something, graduating at 17. And then when I looked at my transcripts, I realized they were just trying to get me out of school because <laughs> it's just like, just get him out of here. Let him go out there. You know, the Lord, let the Lord be with him. And so that was then. But this, but I'm so thankful. Um, I mean, even my wife, she, she has a master's degree. My wife has a math and it was something, it didn't happen in her thirties. And I'm not going to tell anybody how old my wife is because I want to eat some, I want to eat some food when I finish this podcast. <laughs> but um, she went out and got her education and it, it, she was like, you know, you got your, you got an honorary doctorate for your life's work, but honey, you need to go ahead and do some, do some school and get some, um, Get get you some more paper. Get you some more. Get you some more degrees from learn earn degrees. I was mm -hmm. like, well, what about my life? She said, life work. That's fantastic. I'm proud of you. But you need to go through the process and experience going to school. 
and I'm enrolled in going to school. Now, I remember some prophet told me about four years ago, uh, there's some courses out here that you should take and it would be beneficial to you and you can, you know, really enhance your learning and, and grammar and punctuation and all this other stuff. And it, you should, oh, no, that ain't for me. You know, the devil is a liar. I, I'm done with that. You know, I hate school. Uh, no, the prophet was trying to tell me, get out there and learn. Don't be, don't be afraid to learn. It was, it was prophet Shavita's. Yes. <laughs> and so, and so it's the, it's, it's the chiseling away that's mm -hmm. critical. And it's also our generation's responsibility to encourage yes. the upcoming generations, get out there and learn. I see these guys sagging and, and hanging out and doing nothing. And I, I, I'm, I, I'm known for it. Uh, I, I got those guys. I, aren't you scared to walk around? Uh, absolutely not. I'm not scared. I'm, I'm concealed carry, you know, but anyway, um, I walk up to the guys and say, Hey, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, we good. That's good. That, that, you know, I can't even understand what they're saying. I said, hold on a minute. Let me talk to you guys for a minute. I said, do you guys think that you can do what you're doing right now in your seventies? Let's back it down to your sixties. No, you know what? Let's let's drop it all the way down to your 30s. Do you think you can do this in your 30s? What you mean? I said, do you think that you want to be doing this in your 30s? Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll be able to feed yourself and support yourself just out here doing nothing? But what do you want us to do? I try to apply for jobs and there's nothing out there. I said, what are your skills? What are you applying for? I'm applying for this. I said, well, you have no skills. You have no history. You have nothing for them to go by except hearsay or, you know, cousins going to uh, write a reference. Yeah, he's good. He played basketball and he's real good. Okay, so what? You have mm -hmm. no work history, but you're out here. You're, you're out here religiously at this tree, getting your drink on and your smoke on and, and going nowhere in life. And even that takes effort. It does take an effort. So if you can make that type of effort and be successful at being here every day at the tree, what's stopping you from being successful and being at a job earning some money? I never looked at it like that. How, why'd you come up? I said, the Lord sent me over. When you tell people that, I'll tell you what, when you mention the Lord or when you have an anointing on your life, you can go into areas that people say you have to be crazy to go in there and, and step. I said, no, the Lord said he'll give me angels mm -hmm. to guard me unless I dash my foot on a stone. And if I'm going to be a voice of one in the wilderness, not just crying about Christ, but one saying it's time for a change. It's time for us to get educated. It's time for us to rise up economically as a people and stop allowing a, uh, a system that is oppressive to keep us bound any longer. And so when you mention these things, Prophet, mm -hmm. the first thing you hear is, oh, what are you turning, are, are you still saved? Or are you now, are you like a, a left, a right wing or left wing or mm -hmm. whatever, um, um, fascist something you know radical what are you doing i said no i i said oh, no the messiah the messiah came and 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 saved me uh and his he's the son of the father and the father raised him from the dead uh after three days and he rose on the uh, rose and he's seated on the right hand side of the father interceding and so yes i'm saved and i believe that i said but at the same time i'm not going to live bound any longer Yes, I'm not, I'm not living bound and whatever I can do. I don't have another 59 years left here in this world. OK, I don't have I, I don't even want to live another 59. <laughs> I'm cool. OK, but I better pour. I want to pour out. I want to leave here empty. Yes, because we've seen yes. so many of our people left this world full and were never allowed to pour out to the next generation. It was illegal. Now we have to break the barriers and the bondage of control and systematic um, restrictions 
and educate our people and educate our youth. We don't need to see black men going to prison and being- Oh, that's a whole nother topic, mass incarceration, the modern day slavery. Yes. That's that's a whole nother topic. Yes. Well, I thank you for joining today and we have plenty more topics to talk about. It's so many things that we have to go about because we have to educate us. Because when you know better, you do better. Hopefully, <laughs> you do better. I agree. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season because he says, Shavita, the transformation, the transition is to wholeness. That means being whole in every area of your life. Not just shouting and crying and, you know, it, experiencing healing in every way, Heal, healing in finances, healing in the way we think, in the way we process things, you know? Yes. And when we do it God's way, he has no choice but to put his stamp on it because I it agree. is his way. I agree. Well, I love you and I thank you. And, and more is to come. More will come. And let's close out in prayer. Yes. Father, thank you that you spoke through us. You gave us insight, revelation, and knowledge so that you would be glorified and that your sheep and your children, the lost, the saved, and the unsaved will come into the knowledge of the truth. And we make this broadcast so that you will be exalted and glorified. We bless you and we praise you in your son, Jesus, the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach's name, we pray. Adonai Elohim, be glorified. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you.